Hey guys, welcome to the season finale of Dash and Holmes, you take your hearts, episode 14. I'm one of your hosts, Dash, along with my co-host, Holmesy. How are you, Holmesy? Hey, how are you? I'm doing um, good, man. How are you? Mate, mate, mate. We have... I want to I wanna stress this because we have tried to do different projects in the past and tried to get through everything that we've done in like those said projects, but we've never made it to the end of a project before. We have made it to the end of a project, dude. Seen it through, start to finish, first time ever. Yes, and I can't believe it. It, it, it. Honestly, this is one of those um, passion projects that we both kind of had. Um, like when I came to you with it and said, "Let's do it," we were, I was even like, "I don't think we'll ever finish it." But holy shit, here we are. <laughs> we are. Yep. We are at the end. We are at our season finale of our first series, dude. It's uh yeah, it's been it's been a long time. I didn't I still can't wrap my head around the fact we've done it for an entire year. Yeah. That's um or more than a year, I think. Even like it was a year the start of March, Mar- wasn't it? March. Oh yeah, March. Around about March, yeah. Around about March sometimes. So yeah, the fact that it's been over a year, obviously we've taken our time. Um mm-hmm. I, I feel like we've we've paced it quite well. Yes. Um and there's been some small some smaller gaps between, some longer gaps between, but yeah. it's uh it's been a good been a good journey for a video game and for a pod it's uh definitely. it's a first time and definitely not a last time definitely not hey guys if you didn't know dash and Holmes is our tri-weekly book club inspired gaming podcast where Holmesy and i have been sitting down for the last year <laughs> and talking about persona 5 or Holmesy's first playthrough of persona 5 mm. guys dash is what like 10th <laughs> yeah for, <laughs> i'm currently playing my like my fifth at the moment god damn yeah yeah i'm still trying to uh, and i have something i have something to mention about that in during the podcast by the way uh-huh. which is very funny and it kind of boils my blood a little bit but we'll get into that <laughs> guys if you like that please make sure that you subscribe to us on soundcloud itunes spotify dash and homesy.com dash gamer.com and other services where you can give us those cheeky five star ratings and a nice review that surely helps us out and uh, catch us every three weeks with our family over on 8bit.net. Hey, Stevie Jar in the chat. Thanks for coming. I was giving an okay to Steve Jar for yeah. saying he's going to play the game. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely do it. Definitely, definitely. Um, we hope you guys go back. If this, if you're primarily coming here um, and haven't played Persona and uh, have been interested, um, please do, like, first of all, play the game. It's fucking awesome. Second of all, please uh, go back to our first episode and listen right through as you play because it has been one hell of a ride. Uh, to sit down and talk with somebody who's uh, gone through their first playthrough of the game and actually compare my playthrough with Holmesy and like see what d- differences there were. And it's been amazing. So um, I just wanted to stress that uh, it's been awesome to do this. And so let's uh, jump right in to Holmesy. The first question usually is, mm. what, what date are you up to? So uh, where- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I think it was it's sometime mid-February because... Um, everything skips ahead quite a lot. There's a large gap in yeah. time. Um, I can't recall the exact date that we finish up on now. Like, I can't recall the date that you actually save the game on when Sometime you finally... Sometime in April, I think. Stop. Oh, April. Yeah, sorry, that's right. Here yeah, we are. <laughs> like quite a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, that's right. It jumps ahead to February, then it goes to... Yeah. Yeah. So, sometime in April is when you save the game entirely. Yeah. Um, because it is yeah. technically... <laughs> I didn't think of this. It is technically... The game technically is a year. Like it's a year. Span. Oh, it skipped. It's been a full year in game and for us too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't oh, even, that fuck. shit. That just dawned on me now. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That says a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> We're around sometime in April. Yeah. Um, yeah. At the end of the game, obviously. Yeah. There's yeah. been a lot of um. The game changes quite a lot after you, everything kind of catches <clears throat> up with your recount. Um, mm. speaking with Sai, but um, yeah, things really really take off after that point, and we're yeah. obviously. We're through everything now. Um, there is more in the end game than I expected, and it took much longer than I expected. <laughs> I um, I remember saying to Dash, I was saying to you, obviously, last yeah. time we were here, like, I reckon we'll do it by the end of, um, I reckon next next part will be the last one, next episode. Yeah. And you weren't so sure about it. And then, like, I started playing, and I'm just like, I see why Dash thinks that this isn't going to be the last one, but yeah. I'm going to do it. I will push. I will finish this. And we did. I gave you an extra week. I sat down, like, for a long time. Like, I, I really, really pushed this, and I just wanted to... 
once the ball was rolling, I didn't really want to stop anyway, so it wasn't a hard playthrough. No. It was just really long and enjoyable. It was funny because uh, when you did mention it, because I just listened to the the, uh, like the the ending of our last episode before I jumped on here, just to give me a little bit of a refresher of where we left off. And um, you were saying, uh, I, think, I think the next one will be it. And I'm like... <sighs> too sure about that man and then like for the last few weeks i even gave you that extra week to play through it and you were like you were grinding the shit out of this game and i was watching you i was following your trophies as well as you were going because i knew that the trophy list was uh going to tell me when you had fi- like when you had reached certain bosses and also finished the game yeah you're watching you like pointed out one of my trophies as i got the trophy i was just like i just got that like a minute ago I was <laughs> yeah. like, you did it and like oh, what the fuck <laughs> yeah. that was crazy it was great but it was i have great. some information for you that you may you may or may not be disappointed about but we'll i'll find out when we get to that <laughs> oh oh i am <laughs> i am definitely intrigued sir <laughs> um Holmesy, uh let's talk about um the from where we left off last basically you were heading into the next palace and i gave you a little bit of a a guess of who it was going to be and what the kind of the palace was going to be Mm -hmm. um were you picking up on those um tropes those traits basically of what it was going to be as you were heading into the palace or even like um like they were cluing you in basically of what the palace was going to be and when you had the choices of what it was going to be was it obvious um or when they when it asks you or gives you i think during like the dialogue they say like oh what do you think it's gonna be like what keyword can you use for like the mementos app and i i picked the wrong one because i I, (laughs) there was a lot in there and there was so many and i thought i don't i don't really know like i'm trying to think like what would a politician see a city as well it's like a whole place and then eventually excuse me eventually obviously we saw it was a, a ship yeah but no i i wasn't um of all the things that i've guessed and predicted in the game so far like some of them correct some of them wrong i didn't get this one. Oh wow like, when, it, when we popped up on like a fucking ship i was like oh okay the, he sees basically everywhere except himself as a sinking ship and he's the one that's gonna he's like the he's like the noah's ark of japan and shibuya yeah, yeah. so it's uh it's very very cool very unique palace so get, from that from that point, we'll just skip back a little bit. So uh, obvious events of actually coming out of the underground prison, I guess, and actually heading back to uh, the cafe and trying to uh, plan to enter Shido's palace and everything. And everything was kind of opening up. Uh, Sai Nijima kind of has now believed you that you are a phantom thief and this alternate, alternate world exists, the metaverse exists. Um, and basically trying to gain her trust and now she trusts you completely because obviously she, you know she has a little sister telling her these things that these are these are things that are actually happening um and having also the story the side story of daddy sojiro saying that <laughs> he is also an ex uh, government official yeah. who did work with shido in the past and he's just a piece of scum yep 100 <laughs> percent. yeah um how were your feelings also finding out all these things and also like hearing about his, uh, like basically his traits to try and take over Japan? Um, I, there's a lot that I didn't know about the character. Obviously we've seen him a couple of times. Yeah. I've seen him a few times over the game's story and like the course of events, but we bumped into him at a restaurant, I think during our first or second palace that we Correct. completed. Yep. And I remember seeing that um we see him a few times on the phone to various characters as well like um but you never really get like a clear idea of the hierarchy of all the characters in the game like you see like there's the president of the school on the president the principal of the school sorry um there's the siu director then there's obviously shido and stuff but like you never know who's on top of who and like who's next up and all that kind of stuff like even after shido i didn't know whether there was going to be someone above him yes um and just kind of keeps going but i didn't really know what to expect from him i was also surprised to learn about his connection to our own personal character at the start of the game and finding out he was the one that um well i guess he he's he's the one that um got us sent to where we are currently on false charges of assault on him with that uh, while he was drunk out in the street with some woman and um like seeing that personal connection from so long ago come like full circle and like yeah. yeah i love the whole like you know karma what goes around comes around kind of thing it's just like this guy has had it coming for an entire year and yep. here we are to deliver yeah I, I love it because yeah like you said it comes full circle um you basically meet up with him again and um to like meet up with him also in an odd place like just that random restaurant that you're at uh, at that ba- that that buffet and mm-hmm. all of a sudden he bumps into you and they do do the whole playback the callback thing where you know um 
uh, Joker basically hears the voice in his head like, hold on, why does that sound so familiar? Why does this guy sound so familiar? And I do it a couple times during, at, at the, during the game. And it kind of clues you in a little bit. Particularly more at the end too. Like more of it starts, he's just like, I know this voice. I know this person. Who yeah. are you? And then yeah. eventually it's just like, oh my God. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the guy. Yeah, it is. I love it because it, it's, 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 it's not in your face. It's very subtle. And then when it hits you, it hits you hard. Mm-hmm. And it's so great. Uh, especially when your reaction last episode was like, it's fucking Shido. I couldn't believe it. It's fucking Shido. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Um, now, his palace obviously being a ship. Um, he, he says things like he wants to steer the country in the right direction. Uh, you know, this country is a, a sinking ship and all this other... Uh, you know, we, we can't let um, everybody flounder and drown and all this kind of stuff. Um, but it was quite obvious that when you get into his cognition of uh, Shibuya and Japan, basically, that he couldn't give a shit about anybody else. He just wants to be associated with uh, the important people. And yeah. the important people are going to prevail with him. Yeah. Um, it's very... very uh, obvious. <laughs> yeah. Um, very weird. Uh, around that time, that exact time, and I do have... I, I should have pulled it up. I had it on Twitter as well. Um, the time of the release of this game... There was a quote made by President of the United States, Donald Trump. Oh. Yeah. And I brought him up in the last episode as well, uh, that he wanted to steer the country in the right direction. <laughs> and people were like, holy shit, what the fuck is happening right now? Especially for like people playing Persona 5. Uh-huh. That, they were making the obvious connect, like the, not obvious connections, but like a very, uh, there were simil- similar, similar connections. Word for word stuff like, yeah. Yes. Damn. There were word for word uh, connections happening. Uh, Donald Trump quote said, I will steer this country in the right direction. And people were like, <laughs> is Persona 5 like a real thing? <laughs> <laughs> That's so, cool, man. Yeah, I know, right? So it was, it was weird, but, um, and I'll try and find that tweet and I'll retweet it. I'll send it to you so you can have a look at it. But yeah, it was, it was quite weird. But let's talk about the ship itself, about the palace itself, the structure, the design, everything. Did you like this palace? Did you hate it? What were your thoughts? I did like it. Sai is probably still my favorite. Okay. Um, I still like the, I think, feel like her palace was a lot more vibrant and yeah. just looked like really, really appealing to look, look so, at hold, in every minute. way. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You just said that Sai Nijima's palace is your favorite? Yeah. Okay, this is news because last time you said that Futaba's was. Futaba's was. I think Sai's is probably, I think, uh, maybe Sai's is my favorite because of the fact that we see it at the start of the game too and there's just like okay. that connection to like you know it's you're throwback. It's, like it's it's, it's, it's good, the recall it's a cool throwback palace but it also yeah. does look really really pretty yeah um it is but Futapas is still my favorite probably for like the like the egyptian kind of yeah. you know pyramid kind of scheme stuff it looks look really really cool um yeah. i liked shido's palace but yeah. it didn't look it wasn't as good as i was anticipating i think yeah. it could it could, i might also also just not like it because i was i say i don't like it i liked it i don't like it as much probably yeah. because in my head i was thinking it's gonna look way better it's gonna look amazing it's gonna look stunning phenomenal yeah. like best palace ever and then it was kind of like oh it's kind of like a it's a ship it's like the titanic and all the colors were sort of the same and yeah. it was very much like i don't know it all looked kind of monotone in a way yes um yeah i understand what you're saying I like the depth of the palace, like how many places you could go. Yes. Um, but still, I think Saiz is like visually the best one that I've that I've seen so far. Yeah. Oh yeah, design wise, visually stunning, uh, yeah. very vibrant. Uh, size was. Um, so I, I agree with you. The structure of this palace was amazing. Like mm. the way they did it, uh, you can go into different places, and also like I like the uh, parts where um, you go into the ductwork, come out, and you're you're a rat basically, because his cognition is everybody's uh, like these children are rats. I didn't understand, man. I was like, who turned into one? I'm like, why? What? 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 Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, it was great. Smart. It was smart because he thinks of uh, you know these these children as peasants, as rats, um, as annoyances. So like his cognition basically is that. We gotta, we gotta turn, we gotta exterminate all the rats. Like I think he says exterminate a couple of times during his dialogue. I can't remember. Yeah, something but I think he does. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So it, it, it's a uh, great, great cognition there. Uh, great cognition play there by uh, the writers and the creators of this game. They definitely. My my favorite thing is the design of it. Like the design of this palace in terms of the the floor layout and everything, and getting to the, every nook and cranny basically of this palace, even to the boiler room. Yep. Um, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but, uh, also having to basically 
run around the whole palace to find uh, all these important people to get letters of recommendations from these people to get an, a letter, uh, like a, a a form of introduction to Shido. Yeah. Um, it was great because it was uh, like four or five letters, I think it was? Five, yeah. Five, yeah. I have my thoughts about that too. Okay, fair enough. But, you, but each, one pre- each one presents a unique boss battle in terms of uh, coming across all these people. Um, and also having to... Um, like, uh, I think that it could have been done better, though, uh, in terms of having each boss battle not a persona that we have come across in the past. I would have liked mm. a, a different um, shadow or persona, basically, to battle, you know, if these are supposed to be some of the higher-ups in, in the world, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what are your thoughts, anyway? Because uh, you were going to say something. Yeah, sorry, that whole interaction, like, that whole journey through the palace trying to find those letters of recommendation it's it, it bothered me so many times that we <laughs> were getting these letters of recommendation and we yeah. speak, talk these people into giving us these letters yeah and then they give them to us yeah and then they say something offensive and we start to walk away and then we stop and decide to start fighting them for for a few of them or we like antagonize them like ryuji does something dumb and like pisses them off and then Arn <laughs> steps in and then he's like oh let's like, why don't you come and hang out with me and he's like no nah, that, that that don't fly we're gonna beat you up now or like um what is it um haru's haru yeah, yeah haru yeah. as well like the, the guy says something mean about her dad and then it's just like oh, yeah. i won't stand for that and turns around and beats him up which is like it's a shadow no yeah. matter what you do, you killing, you defeating the shadow or like knocking the senses out of it doesn't change the real person. This isn't their cognition. This is Shida's cognition of that person. Yeah. And what they think. Yeah. And so many times we get this letter and it's like, we could minimal effort. We could be done. We have the letter. That's really rude. Shouldn't say stuff like that. We're going to leave now. But yeah. we have to pick a fight every time. Why? Yeah. yeah. Why are we wasting our energy fighting? <laughs> You've <laughs> got a shits, real, man. I thought the exact same thing, and you do have a great point in that, right? But it also um, tells you that because Shido is actually in contact with each and every uh, person, basically in this arc, he thinks of these people as important um, for him to step on to get to his uh, prime ministership. Mm-hmm. Um, but he knows everything about these people to the point where. His knowledge in his head tells the Phantom Thieves, hey, all these people for, uh, like, for example, Haru. Yeah. Uh, th- this TV uh, president, the television president here, president of the television station, thought that your father was scum and he's glad that he's gone. And own- and how does how does he know that? Because uh, Shido knows that. Like, yeah. Shido has obviously had conversations with this guy about it. So um, to know that and, like, to try and... Like to have to battle this, obviously Shido's cognition of the shadow mm-hmm. um, is kind of useless. I get what you're saying, yeah. Um, but it's also, you know, just a way to kind of make the game longer. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like there was sort of like there were bottlenecking parts of the game. There, it's just like yeah. you're just trying to make me fight a guy because I have to fight a guy. Like I don't. Yeah. There's five boss fights in here. Considering like what else comes up later. In yes. the game, like we have oh. to fight five people on the ship, and then what follows? Like fucking hell, man! <laughs> yeah, this why is why you I drag this you, shit out. <laughs> this is why I said to you, this might not have been the finale, but you fucking went forward with it, and I was like, he's gonna, he's gonna clock this game, we and it. we're we gonna have it. to get, yeah, oh yeah. Um, so saying that, you got through all those uh, bosses, basically. Um, my favorite, honestly, out of all the dialogues and everything, was Fatabas with the uh, IT president that was yeah that made me laugh a lot. I did like that one yeah that yeah, was yeah. cool and I get that confrontation because we broke into a guy's office like you know yeah fine but yeah, yeah some of the other ones were stupid but yeah I like that she just like jumps in she's like hey look at my cool computer mine's really cool you, just, yeah. you got you guys got cool stuff look at what yeah. I can do and this guy's like damn you're good have a letter of recommendation and then talks about doing bad shit and then we fight him it's like, yeah it's like I got the letter and it's like oh shit I just screwed up yeah, <laughs> and then they had to fight. I like is, I like that interaction. Futaba is just a good character, though. What I found what I found funny as well was uh, during your time of having to find all these um, people to get these letters was you kept running into the mafia boss, mm. um, constantly yeah. putting roadblocks in front of you, right? Yeah, that's right. So more roadblocks in front of roadblocks. <laughs> I liked um, defeating him at the end though, when he was just kind of like. Um, yeah. 
he basically like, realizes that he shouldn't be like affiliated with um Shido and he's just like, Yeah, it's time for me to maybe yeah. maybe get out of here, hey. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, like this, this is a sinking ship. Come on, boys. <laughs> and then we like we draw like a tattoo for the guy and he's like, This is sick. Yeah, <laughs> like, I love we that. We made friends fun. with the guy and then That we... whole dialogue there with uh Yusuke as well, he's like I'm not a tattoo artist. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not making I'm a tattoos painter. for the mafia. What the hell? Like, yeah, what is it the yakuza? Yeah, the yakuza. And he's like, I'm not a tattoo artist. I'm a, I'm an artist. Yeah. And he's like, and he's like, oh, fine. Just somebody give me some paint and a canvas, and I'll do one up. And he he's like, it. hey, this is pretty good. Yeah. You guys like, yep. Just give me the letter now. <laughs> I thought I don't know. That would have been like a really cool take for them to be like, hey, you don't have to fight this guy. You befriended a shadow, but like, yeah what the fuck? Like the first time ever we've befriended a shadow and not like just gone straight into a fight. That would have been weird. Not only weird, but it would have been cool because it would have been someone from Yakuza. Obviously, yeah. this is not the kind of person you just approach in the streets and be like, I'm going to draw your tattoo. Here you go. So, mate. Still, but. technically, Shadow's cognition of the mafia, mm-hmm. not the actual shadow, which is which kind of sucks as well. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, that that I thought that scenario was going to play out where you just said where we didn't have to battle this guy. We thought that we could, you know, hey, what's up? I just Pokes him into the, giving us yeah, a, yeah, I just drew your tattoo because it would have been the expected thing to actually have to battle him. Yeah. Right. But if you didn't have to battle the yakuza and just drew him a tattoo, and he'd be like, I like this kid. Give me the tattoo. Uh, give me the uh, give me the art piece of the tattoo, and here's your letter of recommendation. It would have been like. Done. Although it just happened. Wow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but you know, either way, that's okay. I didn't mind it. And like you said, the dialogue at the end was quite funny as well, where he's like, yeah, it's sinking ship. We're out of here, boys. Come on, go. let's go. You yep. guys are cool. We're out. I did like that. <laughs> um, then what followed from that was one of the climaxes of this game. Actually, before we ro- I want to roll back a little bit as yeah. well. Um, did you find um, anything convoluted about uh, the palace as well, the structure of this palace, because there were certain points where you had to, like, the casino room, namely, when I got in there to go down to fight the TV president, I had a bit of a hard time trying to find my way out of there. <laughs> really? I did, yeah. Ah, that's, you're talking about, like, the bottom, bottom level, right? There's, like, that big, like, sort of, like, there's the different levels, and you go down, there's, like, these, like, open space with a few yeah. doors, and you go into that one and down another level, and then the TV guy's there, yeah? Yes, yeah, he's, yeah. he's, on, he's on one of the... Uh, oh, I know what you're talking machines. about now, because you defeat him, then you go upstairs, and you go back out, and then you're on, like, the deck of the ship on the back yes. or whatever, and you're like, where's the next door? Yeah. Do you know why? Because there's no icon on that, there's, a, on the map, yes. there's a little indent where the door is, but it doesn't have an arrow saying you can leave here. Yes. And I walked past it like two or three times and I was just like, there's a fucking door there. But the yeah. next door up there has an arrow and this one doesn't. And like, it's the only one in the game, I swear to God, that doesn't have an arrow on the map saying exit here. I kept walking past it because I was like, that's the safe room. And I I'm like, that wait bit a minute. up Because I just, I, I walked past it and I was just like, yeah. fuck this. Where do I go? And then it's just like, when you defeat the guy, go upstairs and turn to the side to a door. And it's like, where's the, oh, yeah, there stupid. it is. Because I kept walking past it. I'm like, that's the safe room. That's the safe yeah. room. I'm like, hold on a second. That's the safe room. What the fuck? And I had yeah. to run back. I'm like, that's the door. And then you end up out on the decking. I'm like, where the fuck am I now? It was re- yeah, because I went through. I went onto the deck. Then I went upstairs to like where the the area where you first come out above yeah, yeah. the deck or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. I I think it's just I don't know. I there's something about that door just was made it just tucked away. Every other yeah. door usually has an icon on it saying like you know you can go through here, but that one didn't. One of the players, one of the uh, designs I didn't appreciate. I mean, I can understand why it was there, but uh, and and it, I, the surrounding was cool. Like mm. the surrounding made it really cool. I'm talking about the the pool, where the pool was. Um, oh wait, where you fight the the snake boss guy? Yeah, yeah. The uh, one the, that tries to, the tries stingray. to take on with the stingrays. Yeah, yeah. He tries oh, to take on the yeah. stingray. Yeah, sorry. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And you have to you have to go underneath the stairs to smash open the vent and then and, change into swimming clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love the surrounding. But this big ass pool in just the middle of uh, this deck it just blocks deck. you off from everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's just I'm like just a waste like, of space. man, waste of space. Seriously, mm. they could have done so much more here. But it's obvious. I mean, it's it's supposed to be a rich boy's arc, so it's yeah. you know, I can understand. Now we'll jump into what came next after the mafia boss. As soon as you leave that area, yeah, they don't really give you much time to break, do they? <laughs> no, it's like, like let's let's go, and it's like as soon as you go. Let's run into... Straight into another one. You fight a catchy, like, god yeah. damn, man. I, yeah, look, that was, um, that was some real sad boy hours. I was, oh, I was yeah. pretty sad to see him go, um, yeah. but it was also a cool fight. Like, it was cool to see him use, he was one of, he is the only other person that we've seen in the game that can, um, that can control two personas. 
Yes. And he's got Robin Hood and uh, Loki. Yes. Um, who's yes. The, obviously, you know, the god of mischief. But You um, said you liked uh, Robin Hood last time. Now what do you think? Robin Hood's still sick, but Loki okay. looks sick too. Oh, yeah. Like, he, he has two of the coolest persona. He does. Not only because they just look cool, but because they also have abilities that have no um, resistance or weakness, I guess, as well. Mm-hmm. Like, you can, he's got almighty damage, which is no matter what type you are, you can't get criticals with almighty, but it's no. not. there's nothing that resists almighty, and there's nothing weak to almighty. So it's just like, whatever damage this is going to do, it's going to fucking do it. Yeah. I like yeah. that, but his characters look awesome. I, I, um, I wasn't expecting him to be able to manipulate and distort shadows further, though, like making them basically like deranged and sort of like um, like he powers them up. He, yeah, he powers yeah. up the two shadows that he summons and then he does it to himself yeah. and makes them like um, he turns them mad, basically. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that kind of power. Um, he's got something that we've never seen in the game before, too. But yeah, we only get to see it in that fight. And then after that, he uh decides to give himself up for us to get out which is the last nice thing he ever does yeah and uh that whole scenario that plays out there too kind of um the way it plays out is heart-wrenching too at the same time because we find out that he's the bastardized son of shido Mm -hmm. um he uh, what a what a way to kind of wrap this up to like at least um a catchy's arc in the game a catchy story in the game too um to actually like say hey uh so i'm actually the bastardized son of shido he abandoned me when i was younger mm-hmm. and um <clears throat> basically to um like shido has his own cognition of a catchy as well yeah who yeah, yeah. he I, like it's kind of unexplained how but is also sent out to kill real life Akechi in his in, in the, the metaverse. Game. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. In, in, the, in that space. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And they're like, uh, you know, the captain's orders or something need, uh, you need to go. Um, and it's great. I, I, I love, um, I love the fact that they kind of put that, that he's not a shadow cause he can't be a shadow. You can't have a persona and have a shadow. So, um, I guess a cognition of what you're working with actually kind of tries to attack you. So even if you did try to kill it, you don't die, which is good. Um, but unfortunately, the fact when- that like his end is because of his dad's cognition of him and just like a disposable tool to, you know, yeah. carry out his orders. Like the reason yeah. he's fighting the phantom thieves is to appease his dad. Yeah. And then as he's fighting the phantom thieves, the person who is trying to appease has sent someone to come and kill him because he's done him. he's played his part he's done his role and it's just like you've just fought you're you fought four people you befriended and now as you're losing against them you're now also being killed like by your by, by your yourself own, yeah, yeah by yourself who's yeah, yeah. i don't know it's, that whole but, bit was so but it also says something about shido oh yeah that, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it says that he could give a rat's ass about who you are and what you are Literally i just anyone. want to be the prime minister yeah yeah it was real um, sad to see after that happened too that everyone's like asking after him too. Like people, oh, people yeah. online are just like um, the comments in your rating down the bottom right corner. Like people, are like where's Akechi? Like what's he done? Like yeah. he's just disappeared. Like he's gone off the face of the earth, kind of thing. It's yeah, like, I saw that. Oh. That's fucking grim, man. People yeah, don't know is. that this guy has literally died in a metaverse, yeah. a, a cognition, like a space where you, know, you obviously once if you die in there, like you're gone. Like that. What, yeah, that, yeah, the, you're the gone forever. Nobody gone, knows. So he's gone forever. His body is gone forever. Like that's it's fucked. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's so crazy. That yeah, that's kind of happened too. So, Ace, like when that when I think of that and like even just talking about it, and then you just think about it, you go like, "Fuck, that's Ace writing. Like that is top notch shit." That's clever. Yeah, you you read that, you read that, or you see that shit in movies, you know. Um, and they did that. They pulled it off so well. And yeah, the battle was a lot of fun. Um, mm, yeah, especially having to go through it twice, playing uh the Robin Hood character and then the low key character. It was great. Fighting two different really personas well. is very very cool. I wish we could yeah. get his his personas too, but yeah, um, it's. I mean, obviously you can't get you can't take the personas of your own the people you're playing with as well. But it's yeah. still really cool. So did you um question when you were when you had uh, Akechi in your party as mm. a Phantom Thief? Did you upgrade him at all? I don't think I did. I gave him. Oh, I bought gear for him. Yeah. I was confused because then when I went back and played it the second time, I'm like, why am I upgrading him? Why do I keep upgrading him? He's just going to use it against me after. Yeah. I don't mean, that doesn't actually come into effect when you fight him though, does it? Because he's not, he doesn't actually have that upgraded gear, right? He's just When he uses Robin Hood, yes. 
when he fights you, does he? Yeah. Or is it not just a predetermined level? Like, or is it the less you invest in him as a character, the weaker he is when you fight him later? No, when you upgrade him as Robin Hood while you while he's in your party, he uses that against you during your fight. Oh, geez. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I spent a bit on him. I didn't. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, I kicked his ass anyway. <laughs> It, somehow after the whole thing i think i might have used like a soma at the time so i ended up having full sp and hp at the start of the fight but yeah i was saving those and i'm really glad i did he's um he's dr jekyll mr hyde character really shown through um right there in that moment i'm uh, shown through when he was uh when he basically tried to attempt to kill joker in the um oh in the yeah. interrogation room in the interrogation room, but then yeah. was on the phone with uh, Shido and basically showing through his real um, American psycho, I should call it, uh, <laughs> kind of yeah. look, basically like, hey, Shido, it's done. And you just see, like, you can hear in his voice and see it in the character's face on the animation on screen that it was real drawn out. Um, it was um, just very much so, like, he's psychotic. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, he's a nut. Sorry, so Gory72 in the chat just said he's a nut. He absolutely was. He definitely is, yeah. And bring, bringing it out in that fight as well, just seriously, like, shown through. It was so it was so well done. His character really was psychotic, and you could tell by the end of that fight, like, when they were trying to convince him, hey, we're your friends, we want to be your friend, we're here to help you and everything. Um, that he was like, shut up, you guys are, you guys are trash. Why would you want to associate, he why would I want to associate it. with you? Yeah, he does. Um, and even then, like when the, when the shadow does come forth, he's just completely like, these guys are still trash, but you're even worse. So, you know, get out of here. You don't want to associate yourself with me. I'm deranged. I'm a lunatic, you know? Yeah. So yeah, very, very sad boy moment. <laughs> that was a big, that whole scenario was pretty intense, but. Not as big as what ends up like ending the game. Oh. Like that's just perspective now. Like right, like thinking about everything leading up to like the final part of the game, which yeah. just blown my mind. And obviously, yeah. like in Shido's fight too. Shido's yeah. fight was so that's what I was going to get to. Let's get to Shido's fight now. So uh, obviously, leaving the palace, sending the calling card. Um, mm. Before you had to leave, you end up in the um, oh, man. What is it called? The barracks, basically. Like, the I don't even know what they call it. Like. It's a barracks, isn't it? The the political room, basically, where they all uh, come to. Oh, you know, um, yeah, I can't remember the name of the room in the yeah, game now, but I know what you're talking about because that's where we that's where we find the treasure. We yes. find the treasure there with yeah. the five letters, and yeah. then that opens up. We see the treasure. Yeah. Leave calling card. Yeah. yeah, calling card. Come back, and then all of a sudden, he's Paul in Pinter. the same room. And not only is he in the room, it's he. It's the first time a shadow has presented itself in a form that is just straight up from the real world um, yeah it's just him yeah it's just him and with yellow eyes using but, yeah oh actually is it doesn't um at the Haru's dad Haru's dad does the same thing he doesn't fight he sends minions out in front of yes. him yes yeah he does so he's the second person to do it because he doesn't actually fight the whole time he's like everybody else do my bidding blah yeah. blah blah yeah so he's almost like a little mini precursor to what you're going to fight end game yeah exactly yeah you're right Shido doesn't come out in well you fight Shido like of- four or five times Really? What was it? There's the wings of something. There's the pyramid. Yep. There's the something else. Oh man, I can't remember. It's like there was a, a oh no, there's three. There's three stages, and then his two. There's five total fights, isn't there? There's the wing. There's beast of something, wings yep. of something. I can't remember what the final. There's was. a few wing. of it. Well, beast of something, wings of something, because the because the uh, it's like a lion and it flies. Uh, yeah. afterwards and then the pyramid yeah and then the pyramid and then you defeat the pyramid and then you fight shido yes true shido and yeah. then you fight shido out of the like, another another like, true shido. Saiyan <laughs> shido like ultra instinct shido yeah exactly super Saiyan shido <laughs> yeah <laughs> super he just Saiyan. kept powering up man i was just like fucking hell yeah. how does he keep going <laughs> it's great it's so, a good fight though like i like that they had such a variety in tactics and it oh, yeah. kind of it was almost yeah, uh, I guess, again, another lead into later events, but uh, a good way for you to practice yes. knowing what skills do what because every single type of character reflected a certain skill you've used before but took w- more damage versus others. So Definitely. Com- coming into that. it as well, coming into it as well, like uh, his speech that he gives you guys and everything, his mm. cognition of around, his surrounding as well. Like, yeah, there's a com- it's a completely empty room. There's nobody in there except for him up on stage. You walk up to him and, like, Grieg is the first one to go, hey, asshole, turn around when we're speaking to you. And he does, and uh, he talks to you guys. But when he's giving his, like, big speech, all of a sudden these people around Everyone's start clapping. clapping for him. Yeah. yeah, it was... And don't they, they all turn into the his pyramid thing, don't they? All like that's, the beast. Yes, that's, yeah. that's the thing Just that turns into the pyramid. Fuck. Yeah, his 
muscles are fake. <laughs> his muscles are fake, yeah. But basically those people uh, that he believes in basically are the ones that protect him and he uses that uh, like as um, his minions basically to try and defeat the Phantom Thieves again. And it's mm-hmm. like, man, this guy is a fucking wacko as well. He's everyone's just- at his, he believes everyone's at his disposal kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. And the, and the funny thing is that like watching it all play out to the way he kind of uh, uses like even these top executives at his disposal because he's the king, um, he's the emperor. Like he's the emperor. This is what he views himself as. Um, and like when he forms himself, like when he walks up the stairs and then he changes into that emperor outfit as well, with the crown, yeah, and the helmet. Like oh man, like that. I gotta say his, his shadow form with that look was sick as well. Uh, great design. He did look really cool. Yeah, yeah. he did. Um, but uh, tell tell me about your yeah tell me about your battle with uh, Shido and how you found uh, the whole fight basically. So it was actually pretty <clears throat> cruisy for me. Okay, um, I've got. To, I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you. This is this is the bit where I'm gonna find out whether you're disappointed or not. Okay. Or, or if or if you're just like ah okay. Go, go. So because I I grinded mementos beforehand as well. Good. Um, and I found out the last boss in mementos before you get into the the deeper parts of mementos is um a giant penis monster. So I love that fight. <laughs> love that fight so much. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, that's I saw great. that. And I saw an S rank fight and I'm like, okay, what's yeah. this going to be? And it's just like, it's a, it's a giant dick with wheels. Yeah, what the hell? Is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, was waiting so for this. Shock. This was what Mug, Mug and myself have been waiting for as well. <laughs> I was not expecting like fucking Thomas the Dick Engine to be like the last <laughs> fight. Man, seriously, what the fuck? Oh, man, it's great. We can't, unfortunately, we can't, for anyone watching the Twitch stream right now, we can't show video footage. No, we because can't. Unfortunately, after September, I think it is, the rest of the oh, game. Oh, no, they changed the it now. It was November. It's now November. Oh, okay. The later in the game. Now, it's still after November in the game is under embargo, so you're not allowed to share that content online right. at all. So if we gave you a preview, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, you can look yeah, it up on YouTube, monster. but yeah. What the hell? Uh-huh. Um, but I did that, and um, in looking up because i wanted to find out a little bit more about like what levels everything was on like some of the fights yeah um and searching like you know stuff for mementos and just like you know googling a few things i came across a cheese um a very powerful cheese a ve- cheese like like cheese, cheese like a cheese a cheese strat oh okay yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and i i've defeated the reaper Oh uh, yeah, I did see that trophy. <laughs> I did see. I was looking. Do you want to know how I defeated the Reaper? Please let me know. Have you seen the cheese? <laughs> no, I have not seen the cheese. There is a rather helpful cheese strat in Mementos. Yeah, and uh, it involves the Reaper on whatever level you can summon him. Yeah, um, and the flu season, and you interact with the Reaper. Yeah, and if he if he doesn't have any ailments, then you run away. Yeah. Um, and if you interact with him and it says the flu season brings despair, right? Despair kills an enemy within three turns and they can't fight. So if you interact with the Reaper yeah. and by RNG, he has despair, you guard for three turns and he dies and you oh, win. You're kidding me. <laughs> so I, I've cycled the Reaper fight like six or seven times and you get like 72 K experience. So I went from level 58 or 59 yeah i'm now level 85 in oh the my game God. because i just kept like cycling <laughs> reaper fights and i saw a flu season come up and i'm like oh, it's fucking reaper time let's go <laughs> you've been waiting for this haven't you i saw it and i was just like let's fucking do it i mean like i did it but i'm still gonna beat him genuinely because either way i would have grinded all the way to the end so at yeah. some point i'll go back and genuinely defeat the reaper fair enough but i did that and i was just like okay 85 is enough i think this is high enough to finish the game so this that is something that i wanted to actually bring up like uh and i will bring this up a little later as well was i did notice that in your trophies as i was going through your trophies after you finished the game Hmm. and i was like hold on a second this motherfucker's defeated the reaper already yeah (laughs) i'm like I haven't even done that. <laughs> oh, have you not done it yet? No. <laughs> okay, yeah. See, like, that's that's also an indicator of how I watched people fight the guy, too. Like, I watched videos of the Reaper. I'm like, oh, well. He's very strong. Yeah, he is, yeah. He's yeah. very strong. It does, it kind of puts me off that his, his weapon is guns, though. Okay. And every single move he does is, like, a loud bang. It's just like, it yeah. doesn't seem right. It seems kind of, like, dorky. <laughs> In a way, that like no matter what move he does, even if he just powers up, it's like kapow, and, whoop, and he powers up. It's just really awkward and jarring when he uses his moves like that. But he oh. looks fucking sick. Oh man, that's great. So 
you get uh you get through so you haven't explained to me though how how was your battle though like with with Shido how would you find going oh, through Shido so easy so, because so because easy. you were so because I was so up. high yeah <laughs> my I think I was like level eighty three or something when I fought him because I went up other oh, levels man. after playing the rest of the game yeah um and then yeah as i went through the rest of it like i fought him and i was just like oh he's hit me okay whatever <laughs> I think because i was yeah i i hit him and i i think in that fight i got the trophy for doing over 999 damage oh wow because i debuffed him and i buffed my characters increased evasion increased critical rates and stuff like that so i like i fucking robbed him he was done so Sick. quickly and so easily but like obviously i still had to learn what he was strong and weak against i love it but we got to yeah going through that fight it was um it was still challenging being higher oh, yeah. up. Oh yeah. But yeah, if if I was like the same level I was before, I I don't think I would have gotten through that fight quickly. I would have taken me several attempts. Interesting. Yeah. So coming out of the palace as well, uh, you've done your part, and did you think that this was it when you finished it? Um, I did actually. Yeah. Oh, oh I did, and I didn't. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because I honestly thought that you were gonna like you you were thinking this is it. This is it. And I was wondering, I see the reason I thought it was for mm. a moment and thought it might not be, I wasn't entirely sure yeah. because I knew two things. Yep. I'd gotten to the end of Mementos yep. and there was a door that wouldn't open Yep. and I had finished the highest level Mementos fight you could do, which is an S rank fight against um, Thomas the Penis Engine. Mm. So beat him, <laughs> but there was a door at the end of it and it says like, right. this door won't open. I'm like, okay, well, what could possibly be beyond this door when I've done the hardest fight in Mementos? Yeah. And then two things cross my mind. There's more in Mementos than I realize and yep. it's going to continue on. Yeah. Or the other thing, which I think I ended up leaning more towards in the end was because I was like, Shido's fight was so hard. Surely there isn't more. Yeah. Um, was maybe this is where that hidden boss is when you play through the game a second time through. Like someone was saying there's like a hard boss to defeat. So there like, is. Okay, there is. It, it, I know there is, but it's not Mementos, obviously. Or maybe <laughs> if it is, it's not that door. Because that right. door leads to... On and beyond. <laughs> My yep. God. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you have now, like, you, you've passed that uh, and everybody's around, like, in Shibuya, like, oh, you know, what's the matter with Shido? You know, Shido's cognition has changed. He's... Uh, now admitting that he's a piece of shit and uh, needs to be locked away or whatever. And people are like, oh, but Shido is still the best and Shido is still the greatest and we still want Shido to lead our country and all this other stuff. And he tries to like kill himself. He yeah. kills himself so the palace collapses for a moment too. Yeah. Like what we have to escape. Like what the fuck? Yeah. But yes, you're right. The, the public still wants him to be president. Even, yeah. Or president? Well, Prime Minister. Prime Minister, that one. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but he, and he's still... Like the, the the public's cognition of it is all like still out of whack, and people are like, what the fuck is going on? Why do people still have the you know are still hung up on this? Yeah. So and then it comes to fruition that you have to head because the, the people's palace is mementos, mm-hmm. and you have to change everybody else's cognition of what's going on around them too. So having to head back down to mementos and actually heading through that that big ass door. What were your yeah. thoughts getting to that fucking huge door, basically? Uh, I had no idea what was coming. No yeah. idea. Although, um, yeah. it did give me a little bit more, um, because the, the thing that's been in the back of my head this whole time, and even after doing everything, this is the other thing that made me think there was still more. Where the fuck did Morgana come from? We still didn't know. Nothing had answered that question yet. Yeah. Then we go into, we start like saying more about mementos. I'm like, okay. And then Morgana starts also saying like, he's talking about like, oh, you know, I'm having, I'm starting to recall some shit. Yeah. What's yep. going on guys? Yeah. Um, so obviously there was more coming clear from that, but um, we still didn't know. Obviously. Yeah. It was quite know, obvious. Yeah. Details. Yeah. So now like you're, you have now reached the, the, the mementos depths. Actually, before we do that, I want to roll back a little bit as well. Once again, to the Shido fight. Yeah. When actually stepping into the Shido fight and that music kicks in, mm. did you appreciate that music? A little bit. Because it was it's a change. Sorta, I was expecting something more epic. Okay. I didn't... I, I liked it, but I was kind of like, oh. Uh, you don't like... You didn't like Rivers in the Desert. It was okay. It wasn't... It wasn't... Um, It didn't... For what the fight was, like, yeah. visually, the yeah. music didn't really do it for me. Okay. It sounded okay, but um, later music that comes up, I was like... Pfft. Yeah. But, um... Yeah. yeah. That yeah. definitely does kind of... Mm. Like so, something to that scale. That's what I was expecting for maybe that fight, but not the same music. But yeah, like goddamn. Speaking of music, and that's why I kind of rolled back. I want to. I want to mm. say that I appreciate the music and the mementos depths as well. Like that, it just presented such a chill vibe for such a fucking scummy area as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
give me a give me, give me your first impressions, or like your first thoughts of actually rolling into the Memento's depths. Um, it blew my mind how much was underground. I did not yeah. expect like after such a you know you get a pretty big spectacle of what Memento's is, but you yeah. get like little controlled pockets of cognitions inside of people's minds of um. It will just 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 people's minds you're in, you're inside the mind of one person and yeah. that's it to then take all of that and then dive into the mind of an entire city and just see how big that uh, not pyramid sorry i'm thinking of futalis palace now how big that's that right, palace yeah. is overall for an entire city is nuts yeah. it also looked really this actually gave me like um my brain sort of did something for a little bit here but because of the um there's all the skeletons and like these spines with like the ribs coming off of them and stuff have you watched, um, you've watched Sword Art Online, correct? Yeah, of course I have, yeah. Yeah, you know, like the, oh, for anybody wee, wee, who's wee, not watched wee. Sword Art Online, you guys can, you can kill the, kill the sound for a moment here, like 20, 30 seconds, I'm going to spoil something later in the, in the show, in the show. You know, um, towards the end when they fight that giant, um, this massive skull, like, um, skull reaper thing with yes. the massive sword hands. Yeah. And the, it's like all like centipede legs and shit. Yeah. That's what the spines made me think of. I went down Fuck, into the and was that. like, it's a fucking Skull Reaper's den. Yeah. It looked really cool. I like, yeah. um, it looked disgusting, but it looked really cool. It too. was really well done. The mm. design of the, the, the full design of Mementos, I, I love. From the moment you step through and the, the cognition of like Japan's palace is essentially the subways, but it was actually getting you to your destination, which is the true palace. Yeah. Which is where you are now. Um, man, I, I loved every single moment of like entering this, like, this is honestly my, this is probably my, my, my favorite palace other than Futaba's. This, this had to be yeah. my favorite palace. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the design aspect of it and everything else, um, really kind of puts it into a, a form of like, even uh, you see kind of like blood vessels in the ceiling kind of, or nerves in the ceiling. I think it's nerves basically in the ceiling yeah. kind of like pointing towards where you need to go and not only does it go deeper as in lower fucking keeps going like you got levels that keep going lower and lower and lower to to get to your goal Mm -hmm. um the structure of it as well having a place um having a kind of some of the puzzles the floor puzzles as well kind of having to uh walk across them did you have any difficulty in actually working that out like changing the lights from yellow to blue there were a couple yeah there were some that were um there were some that were a little bit um convoluted at times but i realized <laughs> after the first one yeah um i realized after the first couple of puzzles when you get like those little discs that you had to do to unlock doors and stuff i yeah. was like oh okay well i mean it, it seems like there's obviously clearly something i have to do for some of these puzzles to be able to actually complete them yeah um i think that's there's kind of i'm gonna i'm gonna like promote my uh my thought process in this game a little bit here but i think that i think the way that i've the amount of games i've maybe played and like puzzle based stuff yeah. has really aided me in playing this game because a lot of this stuff i'm sure would have been a lot harder had i not played so many different games with like puzzle based stuff in it so coming up to some of these parts in the game i i, I looked um like going through I, I didn't like read through a guide to like tell me where to go but looking at like different people trying to do certain parts in the game, other people complained about like, you know, I'm stuck in this part of Mementos. I can't do this puzzle. This is stupid. It's so hard. And it's just like, yeah. there's a disc like right there. There's a disc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, go get the disc, then go put it in. So there's, surely there's a spot where the disc has to go to do the, yeah. what are you doing, man? Yeah. And it's just, it was, um, we got through it. It took a while to get through. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I, um, I think the other thing that aided my progression in there though, which made things very quick, was the fact that I was level 80 something meant that every persona, not persona, every shadow I snuck up on, uh, because of Ryuji's max confidant rating, yeah. um, I immediately took their masks and skipped the fight. So, oh, okay. so everyone that I ran up to, like, you know, Mementos, if you yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it kind of like you rip them off and it goes, so you, you already hold so many masks. Yeah. yeah. So like the whole journey through Mementos, like I had to fight. It's because you were leveled up so high as that's, well. That's it. That's what I mean. Like, because yeah. of that, I was just so high up that I hardly had to fight anyone. Like I just... So yeah, I tried, true. I've tried to get to that in my latest run. Um, and my problem is I fucked up because when I started this latest run, I bought powerful masks thinking if I buy powerful masks, I can breeze through this and get to, get to the trophies I want. Uh, no, 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 uh, no, they don't, they, don't, they do not let you do that. Nah. And not only do they not let you do that as you get into the palaces further down the line, you, you're fighting every fucking shadow again. I'm like, oh my God, I have fucked up here. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you gotta be careful when actually purchase, repurchasing 
personas as well if you're ever going to go back and do new game plus um but that's great like you actually did you find this uh, a breeze to get through or did you find it like there was like difficult shadows to pass through um some of the like the boss fights were or not boss fights were like the the mini bosses i guess were, yeah, yeah. were pretty cool to do um yeah. there wasn't um I think even if I was at like my normal level, it wouldn't have been as challenging. Um, mm. I know there's going to be people listening to this now. People are going to be like, t- listening to the last episode and be like, man, he cheesed the Reaper at the end of the game. What a <laughs> nerd. Can't believe he did that. I'm sorry to disappoint anybody who's heard me do that. I, yeah. um, I, if I hadn't have done it now, then I would have done it later. <laughs> man. Um, so, uh, I want to, I want to actually, uh, talk to you a little bit about, uh, each path that you actually stepped down through, um, mementos as well actually had a meaning behind it i just found this out today <laughs> the names of them yeah yeah the names of each path has a meaning i had no idea uh-huh because i didn't i saw them but i never looked into it i just yeah. I, I can't even i couldn't tell you a name of the off the top of my head yeah so um the uh the world of mementos is actually around a uh a represent this this is what it's called kelepot is what it's called kelepot is the representation of evil or impure spiritual forces in Jewish mysticism, uh, the polar opposites of the Holy Sephirot. Now, each each path that you went through has a different meaning. So, like, uh, you know, uh, each level that you went through had, like, a different meaning to it. So, cognition, robbing... Uh, so, the first one was uh, Kir- Kirmana. I can't pronounce them. I'm not going to. No, that's okay. I'm just going to go through each level. Basically, the first level was uh, the cognition, robbing path. The second level was Harmony, Robbing Path. Uh, third one was Temperance, Robbing Path, which is also uh, one of your uh, confidants as well. Uh, uh-huh. tem- temperance as well, which I think is the teacher, Kawakami. So that's, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I maxed her. Oh, ne- no, I nearly maxed her. Sorry, I got to like level seven or eight. Well, there you yeah, go. I didn't, I didn't romance her yet. We're going to get into that as well. Uh, compassion, Sense. Tolerance, wisdom was the last one before you entered into the depths. Yeah. So um, quite interesting that each each one of them had a meaning to it as well. Um, because that also aids to the seven deadly sins and what it opposes as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, now getting through the depths and finally getting to the end of the depths. Yeah. The mementos, you come across this big motherfucking cup. Yeah, goddamn, dude. That yeah. was something else. That now, when involved. I gave the game to you, yeah, when I gave the game to you, I said, get ready for it to touch religion. Yeah, fuck, man. I, that whole fight was just, it was just spectacle after spectacle. That was just so, like, yep, yeah, you, you do one part of it and then you leave and you come back and do it again. It's just, yeah. Everything just constantly evolves and changes. It's just like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is yeah. insanity. Yeah. It was very, very cool. Yeah, and having to uh, fight it, and every time you tried to fight it, uh, everybody was screaming, no, do not hurt the Holy Grail. Mm-hmm. And even I was like, did that? Did they just call that the Holy Grail? Are, am I seriously fighting something like out of fucking artifact? the Bible yeah. here? Yeah, <laughs> but this is the Holy Grail. And then all of a sudden, it, it, like when it, every time you try and attack it, it starts to light up a little bit, turn different colors, and it just turns into fucking solid gold. Like bright gold grail, and it's like feeding off of the support and like the the, the cognitive need and want for like somebody to guide them and like tell them what to do. Like yeah. that's not fucked up. <laughs> it's so, but it's spot on onto what we live in. Yeah. Um, in a world where people will like, rely on religion and everything for guidance. Yeah. Um, but they, they, the game spins it a little bit. It turns it into a political kind of realm. It turns it into like this thing where, um, you know, should we be following this kind of faith and all that kind of stuff? I don't want to talk a little bit too much into religion and everything, but mm. it, it basically what this game does is show that, um, you know, humans, you know, what, what, what the game's trying to spread, send is that, are we kind of blind to weakness? Are we kind of like? I mean, you could look at it from a perspective, uh, from a political perspective. Anyway, if yeah. you don't, if you don't want to make it a religious thing, you can just yeah. basically look at it as like the Holy Grail is uh, is politicians and are like yeah. basically oh, yeah. like anything to do with like the political presence around the world, and from their perspective and what they think is that like they they're the ones that should be running the world and telling people how to live and what to do and where their money goes. Right. And that nobody should be able to think for themselves and that Correct. they should be the ones saying what's happening. Yeah. Um, it's just, the, I feel like 
obviously we don't want to say anything offensive about religion no, no, anyway. Not, not that yeah, we yeah. have anything offensive to but say. It's not, but it's not us, it's the game. It's, not, it's the game, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's what we so, come across. Yeah. But it's that they've chosen a very cool analogy to use yeah. to portray oh, yeah. that perspective of political, yeah. the political space. Yes. Um. I Yeah, I did. There's so much more scope in this game than I originally anticipated, and it's it was very cool the way that they wrote it all. Yeah, oh, it was well done. And like as I said, when, when I gave it, I said, "Get ready for it to touch religion. Get ready for it to touch politics." It's it's very touchy, mm-hmm. um, but its delivery is fantastic, and yeah. uh, the way they deliver everything here, it just like the dialogue of the Holy Grail once it kind of livens up and everything actually starts talking to you saying, I'm, I'm the Holy Grail. I'm the one that you should be. I'm the one true God. I'm the one that you guys should be, um, uh, you know, bowing down to, um, feed off of, you know, uh, I, I feed off of you and you feed off of me. And this is the way that the world works. Yeah. Um, and obviously being a fan of thief, you're just like, fuck you, Holy Grail. That's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so, but this part of it, he throws you back into Shibuya. The real world, yeah. Yeah. So from there, not only does he throw you back into Shibuya, you hear like things, you hear things like a, uh, like a blur, like Joker, this isn't that, blah, blah, blah. And you can't really make out what's happening. But you guys are thrown back into the middle of Shibuya. And this is where shit gets ultra fucked up. <laughs> yeah, we all start melting. Or like yeah. just disappearing. I, I had no idea. Like when this Well, not happened, only just that. It, the, the, oh, world the world of mementos like, yeah like the mementos invades our real world and like yeah. that's the fact that like all the people that are the most affected by this blind following of other people yeah they're the ones that take the longest to react to what's going on but like the right. people that are kind of thinking for themselves yeah are just like what's happening to our world what is what's going on why is this what is this evil that is infecting our world and yeah. it's again it's, it's really really cool perspective yeah and it's the phantom thieves um it's Daddy Sojuro, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, Sai. It's your, Sai. It's your confidants, basically, that you've ranked with yeah. and have maxed out that are the ones that know are looking at this and going, what the fuck is happening here? Why yeah. is this all this happening? Even, um, and of course, why not? Because you got to throw the nerd at the top there, freaking Mishima, in the train, like, the fuck I is was, going on? It was real cool to see him, like, well, we're going to jump ahead a little bit, but it was really, really yeah. cool to see him encouraging people to, like, support the Phantom Thieves and, like, that's what kind of powered them up and brought them you know, to where they were. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was exactly. good. He's, he is like a, while he didn't fight alongside the Phantom Thieves per se, he was a, yeah. a verbal hero in, in yes. some aspects. It was nice yeah. to see him get his, uh, his little bit. Yeah. Now going, now uh, heading back into it, yeah. uh, like obviously you said they melt, they disappear basically from existence because the cognition of the Phantom Thieves is fading and fading because people are still people believing more them. and more. Yeah. Yeah. Because as Mementos kind of merges with the real world, it's no longer a metaverse. It's, um, the real world has become the metaverse and people's cognition of Shido has overpowered uh, the Phantom Thieves here yeah. because less and less people believe in the Phantom Thieves. So the cog- the cognitive world, because it's become part of the real world, the Phantom Thieves don't exist here and they get sent back to um, a part of the metaverse, which is basically just the Velvet Room. Um, yeah. They get thrown back to the Velvet Room and Eeyore's there like, you've lost the game, guys. And it's like, how the fuck did I just lose this game? We just uh-huh. got to the end. Like, even I was sitting there like, what do you mean? What do you mean, old man? I just almost won and you guys kind of threw me back here. Yeah. How's that fair? Mm-hmm. And then it kind of gets revealed that this motherfucker's not. This guy, is, he's been <laughs> orchestrating this the entire time. Well, he is the fucking Holy Grail. He's he the is guy the Holy that Grail. Is, he's the one that set this whole thing up from the, from the start. And it's, Were you I, shocked? I was because yeah. I didn't expect. Um, oh, what was her name? Now was it Lavenza? Lavenza, yeah. As well, like I wasn't yeah. the, like the twins getting merged. Him yep. being like a uh, basically like an evil, like a pretty much like an evil god slash demon Papa that's Master, taken yeah. over. Um, like the real Igor, yeah. Um, whose actual real name is Igor, but yep. um, his real voice is real cool too. I like I like his character. I'm sad that his character had such short screen time. Like the, his the true real character. Igor, yeah. I like oh, yeah. him too. You like do? his his real character in like on screen, I was like, I was super sad to see him just be there for such a short time. And Leven- Lavenza is cool though. Fuck yes, yeah. she is yeah. awesome. Yeah. And seeing like what happens to the twins like merging and like the whole. I mean, I I always noticed from the start like, oh, they've got eye patches on opposite sides. Yeah. It's really cute. Like it's cool that they're like you know the eye patches are one side and the other, and they're split personalities. Like one's really sweet and one's really sour. Like they're kind of like you know they've got their own conflict, and then they merge Correct. and it's like this yeah. perfectly balanced. Like this is who I am, person. It's yep. very very cool. Um, 
yeah, that, that I wasn't expecting what was going to happen there to happen though. Yeah. Thanks Crimson for the follow, by the way. Hey. Much appreciated. Um, but yeah, like honestly, um, I didn't pick up on it until they had to be merged. Mm. Like <clears throat> when, when they were saying we need to be merged, we need to become one again. You're not our real, you're not the, even our real uh, commander. You know, we need to get the real person back. This guy's an imposter and all this other stuff. And then when they turn around and say like, he's the imposter and it's like, Motherfucker, you serious? What the fuck? And he just like starts floating in the air, like yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, that was a big shock. I wasn't oh, expecting yeah. that. I thought he was. I still remember questioning, like in earlier episodes, like who is this eagle guy? Like you know, we know what the metaverse is, but who, who and why are these people helping us? Like, what's the dealio? Didn't distrust them. I just thought it was weird. But so yeah, yeah. In saying that, Holmesy, we get to a point in the game where uh, the Holy Grail, Igor gives you a choice of keep Shibuya the way it is or fight against him. Yeah. How did you fare here? Uh, well, I picked to fight against him. I didn't want to. Obviously, cool. I, I picked the true ending, um, like the real ending, because like we fought this far in the game. Like I saw the answers and I'm just like, why would I pick to keep everything the same? We've just fought. I fought for 100 hours game <laughs> to change things. I'm not, yeah. I'm not getting to the very end and being like, Ah, whatever. Fine. You have yeah. no way. Like, no, thank you. So I picked that. Yeah. Um, and then he he didn't take that. He didn't take so kindly to that. Of, of course. Yeah. No, of course not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then we went and rescued our friends. And um, once you, once you pick like, once you yeah. once you pick that ending. Oh, that that choice. That, sorry, that um, choice. He, yeah. Uh, I guess ends up getting out of there, and you get um, Lavenza kind of gives you a hand as well. I think. Yeah. And um, you learn about who Igor's true being is, or like who he actually is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was really cool to be able to walk around inside the velvet room as well. Yes. I yeah. wasn't expecting to be able to actually get in there and, and How explore. cool is it though? Yeah, yeah. it's nice to see. It was just cool to have it as a, like our own little sort of social space for a moment and go around yeah. and talk to our Exactly, team. yeah. I, well, um, the thing was, the velvet room was a representation of Joker's heart and where he was at the time as a, as a prisoner. Um, and they even said it. You're no longer a prisoner here. You're you're not. You, you shouldn't feel like a prisoner anymore. You're free. Because Lavenza realizes her true nature as well. Like each half of Lavenza realizes who she is. She really is. Yeah. And then executes each half of herself to become Lavenza as a whole. Um, yeah. Does it? Isn't it? Is it Lavenza that sends Igor out of there, or does Igor leave? I can't recall now. Oh, not Igor, you mean Fake Igor? Fake Igor? Or? Yeah. I can't remember. What he just leaves. Right he just disappears and That's brings back right, real yeah, Igor. Because then she speaks on behalf of True. Yeah, Eagle. because he's like, so be it. You want to face against me? Fine. Then he disappears, brings back real Igor. We missed something big. Um, What's that? We got to go back a little moment. Um, yeah, we also found out during the time of Mementos where the Velvet Room was, and the fact that we'd gone past it on the way yes. down, but also where Morgana came from. We, yes. we figured that we figured all this out in this time. We found out that Morgana was created to help. Um, it was she, he, sorry, not she, the voice actors is she, huh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> he was created to help me basically. Right. Or yes. to help the, the trickster, um, guide, you know, yeah. guy, like basically guide the trickster through the game. Yes. Um, correct, correct, and yeah. Morgana dreaming about his creation, constantly waking up with like these, you know, green eyes or like bright, bright green, yellow eyes or whatever. And just like, being mm-hmm. created in the that room, I think yeah. it was the quarantine room. Yep, that's um, correct. It was all true. Yeah, and they yeah. It was like Morgana isn't human. This whole time Morgana's been like, maybe I'm human. Like that misdirection that whole time when Morgana been like, I'm human. I'm fucking human. It's, it, it was great misdirection as well because mm. they find out he's not really human. He was just made in the metaverse. Um, he was made to um send it. It's, it's like emergent. Like it's an emergency. Like if an emergency happens, run, cat, run. Yeah, and kind of that happened. Um, to guide the trickster back to save the world. Yeah. Um, and it was done so well, like that whole dialogue to make you believe that Morgana was actually human, but not. Mm. Um, perfect, perfect, um, perfect way to kind of um, deliver that. As well as finding out at this point when Morgana was human, like you said, rolling back to that room where um, you see like Kamashita and everybody in the jail and the, the, the door's right in front of them and like, what the hell's this door? And then rolling back into the velvet room here and then him explaining that, I'm from the Velvet Room. I've been created by Igor. He's my master. He was my creator. Um, and he created me for this purpose. Man, really kind of just, once again, full circle playing. Yeah. It just comes right back to you. Um, great moment in the game as well. And then when Igor guides you and says, it's time to go save the world. And you run up those stairs and you're heading back to Shibuya and you exit and the door's behind you again. Yeah. That and was you're some like, cool shit. 
That's the door. We're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the ballroom door. That's so, so cool. Yeah. We, um, can I go back one real quick second as well? Go just for it. something that I remembered and I've got my notes Yeah, go for it, go for it. Too. I thought Ryuji died for a bit there too, hey. Did you? <laughs> did you? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, I saw that and I'm just I like... I we going to follow through with that. That whole thing, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Right at the end of this game and he's the one that goes and that bit made me think the game was done for a bit too. Oh well, yeah. When yeah. that happened, because I was like, okay, end of the game, we've succeeded, but we've lost someone really important. Yeah, to they're us. not. They're not going to fucking end the game with somebody dying like that, though. I was like, because I thought that was going to be it. It was like a bittersweet end. Like we finally triumphed over, you know, Shido's done. We also lost Ryuji, and then like you get out, and then he turns up, and like, hey guys, what happened? Like, no, not even that. He's just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? I was yeah. so frustrated. I'm happy he was still there, but I, like, yeah. God damn. My notes literally read, are you fucking kidding me if Ryuji dies? And then the next line in all caps is, oh, fuck you, game. <laughs> <laughs> That's my notes. I've just cleared for like talking about it now. But Great that was my exact notes delivery, <laughs> though. Great delivery. They did it so well. Because yeah. well. I believed it, too. Mm-hmm. Did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I thought he was yeah. done. Like, you don't see him turn up. And it's like, he's yeah. you don't see him come out. Yeah. Explosion happens. You don't see him anywhere. It's like, yeah. he's just been incinerated. He's just he's dead. Gone. He's dead. <laughs> like, yeah. fuck. It's great. I love it. Sorry, we'll get back to... No, no, let, 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 yeah, let's skip, let's skip back to where we were. Mm. So now you're uh, standing in the middle of Shibuya. Once again, uh, it's still the merged mementos. Uh, so it's the metaverse Shibuya. But what has happened now is that um, Shibuya has now been renamed. It's actually so like, it was funny because when I went to save at this point, because you can save at this point, it's a save point. And um, it emphasizes that too at some point. I think it says like, this is your, oh no, that's later. This is the, after yeah. this bit, it gets to the, yeah. like to like the end end and it's just like, hey, this is your last You can't save, save now after this yeah. bit, yeah. Um, but what happens is this, Shibuya gets renamed here to Kelly Park. So this Shibuya uh, now is a representation of Kelly Park. I didn't pick, so I didn't when pick I went to go, up. Yeah, because when I went to go save it, it said Kelly Park. I'm like, what? No, this is Shibuya. And I'm like, then when I found out all this today, I'm like, oh, this is why they called it that. I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> mm. So um, so we get up to that point and it's like, okay, so which way do we go now? And there's like this this bone, bone marrow bridge, spy, yeah. yeah, that just leads you up to uh, what they call, well, what they what they do call uh, Calipod, I believe. This is um, the, the path of mementos are named after Calipod, specifically versions uh, given by William G. Gray in his book, The Tree of Evil. Uh, this ties into the ultimate master of mementos uh, being, we won't say yet, um, yada, 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 but we'll get to that in a second. But what I wanted to show you guys, I can actually pull something up on stream, which is hey. not in the game. However, this is the representation of Calipot they give you on Wikipedia as well. So I'll pull it up right now on screen. But this is Calipot, like the, the real version of it and what they see in um, like in Jewish um, religion. And it looks so much like the map that you oh, get. Oh, no way. Yeah. At the end of the game. So do you see it like from the bottom and up? I because see you get, what it is when you like, there's the map that you can carry through as you go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and as you get, as you go through different paths, because you get, once you go up to this bridge, it's not like one certain path straight forward up and then afterwards. No, it's one part here, one part there, one part in the middle, and then you can choose different paths and all this other stuff. But it leads all to that end, which is at the top, which kind of diverts into one specific point yeah right up the top there like i don't see your mouse but one point that you can't see my mouse but yeah um that is a great representation of something that just comes out of once again religion and politics and all that stuff but man it just all the all these thinking like all these thoughts and thinking of everything like these writers and creators that go back and have to look up all this stuff and go that'd be a great thing to use that'd be a great thing to use as well yeah it's really well thought out it just stuns me half the time, like how well thought out half the shit they have put into this game really is. Um, they've done a lot. Like, oh they've yeah, put so much detail into this game. There's so many things that you, I, I'm not gonna be able to give you a specific example because there's so many right now. But there's so many yeah. things that happen in the game, and then something else comes up later that like brings light to stuff that's happened in the past. And there's like so many callbacks and so many like revelations and things that you yeah. realize about the game. It's like everything connects to something else in this game it's insane it definitely even does, like yeah. shido like shido is pretty much like one of the core palaces like shido is connected to every other palace in this game yeah in every definitely. way now you go through the path of calipot is called mm. at this point and you face mini bosses once again you come across different um different angels or basically like different angels yeah yeah angels of god basically uh that you have to battle as well which are like 
children. Why are you coming across? We are here to save you, here to help you and all this other stuff. It is really, really um, fascinating how well they um, have, like, as Buddy says in our chat, hey, Buddy, awesome use and detailed references used. Yes. Yeah, 100%. Like, it, even the, um, like, some of the angels that they uh, took from the Bible and placed them in here saying, you know, like, some of their quotes that they use are directly ripped from the Bible and placed here, but kind of spun in a way to actually say like, children, we are here to help you or children do not sin or all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's great. Um, And like you said, well thought out, well detailed. Um, Was there any battle that you did come across with these angels that you thought, oh fuck, this is actually quite hard. Um, There was, I can't remember the name of the one now, but it was this, I think it might've been the second fight that kept summoning um, the... Again, I can't remember the name of the shadow that you fight to, but there's like one of the angels in the middle that keeps summoning like minions on the sides, mm. and they kept using. Um, I think it was one of the it's one of the <clears throat> healing abilities where mm. basically they cast the spell or cast the magic, and then it fully heals everybody else, and they cut their own health to one HP. But mm. then they just it's just constantly cycling between like different ones you have to fight. Yeah. It's just like I just killed you, and yeah. then I killed the other <laughs> end, and then I'm gonna go attack the guy in the middle. Oh wait, shit, he's just summoned two more, and now they've healed him again. It's like fuck, man, <laughs> shit. And it just kept going. I eventually I've I started using like blanket damage magic like yeah. just to, to get him down, and then um, I think I started using lucky punch as well because like, yeah. um, Morgana had it still at the time and uh i had a persona that also had it for senpai yeah uh and so i just kept using the lucky punch just like critical all out critical all out and eventually we got there but like my god yeah such a loop fight you, you could get stuck in that for so long oh man hi nato by the way thanks for coming um it, it's um it really kind of for me it really kind of represented what was great about going through um this path of calipot and also having to come across all these angels to actually get to what was coming at the end a representation of a, like um uh, a, a god a being a, an almighty being at the end of what we needed to defeat and mm-hmm. it was obvious that we were coming to the end to once again slap the shit out of this holy grail um yeah. and then um we got to that point and like you said uh, that final mini boss that we had kind of warns you saying like, don't, don't stray any further for your, like for, you're not going to be able to, you, you won't live after this if you, if you try yeah. and um, defeating that final boss going, get, get out of the way. And then um, <laughs> push on. Yeah. And then it says, and it comes up with that screen that like that warning. And it's really a, a <laughs> warning in you saying, go, you sure you want to go further? Like yeah. save here. They to, emphasize a lot. Like, oh this yeah. Is, this is it. What you're going to do is it. You, you're, yeah, it's sure? like save here, guys, because it's gonna get hard, and it does get hard. But the thing is, like that warning that comes up, and it's like quiet. There's no music. There's nothing playing, and you guys are just standing there in front of this entrance. Mm-hmm. And like you know, you had that dialogue it's very beforehand. Ominous. Yeah, oh, very ominous. You had that dialogue before it, and it's like that screen comes up, and it's just murky. And I, like every time I've done it, I've had a three. I do a three hundred and sixty just to have a look around. Yeah, and the views like awesome and weird and. Um, but that ominous warning of save here, guys, it's just so, it's bone chilling a little bit. Yeah. And then walking through that entrance again to get to the Holy Grail once again. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked this fight too. Like yeah. So t- tell me, tell me your thoughts of the, uh, final Holy Grail part of this fight. Yeah. Um, it was a cool, cause you haven't done this. I don't think we've done this for a little while now, but it was cool to see, um, using a character as a distraction again i can't yeah. actually think of another fight now oh no actually sorry you do it for sai's fight as well you don't do it for um shido no um but sai's fight obviously with like the the roulette wheel you have to have someone go off to the side to shoot the glass to yeah. win yeah with the roulette wheel um it was cool to see that mechanic back again yes where you have to send somebody off to distract or like to, to disappear yeah. for a little bit it happened with uh kamashida as well um, the very first battle as Kamashita, well, where you had to kind of knock his crown too, off because yep. you have to pull, pull the ink over the paintings. Correct. Um, and obviously Sai. Yep. Um, seeing that come back again for this fight, it was really really cool. I yep. had to pick um Yusuke as well because he had the sword. It made sense that he was the one that was going to fucking anime slash through the fucking tentacle thing. Yep. He was just like like dives through, ends up on the other side, and then they all split after it's like yeah yeah true anime <laughs> yeah it really is yeah. um it looked really really cool though i like yeah. that mechanic coming back and then once we'd done that it was a pretty chill fight i think oh, yeah. it's like one charge attack that he does yes. after his health goes down to like half or a quarter yeah just guarded it yeah knocked out knocked down the health it was um the that holy grail fight was pretty cruisy yeah it definitely was 
Um, but what it was leading to was the ultimate mm. final fight. <laughs> now, were you expecting this? <laughs> no, absolutely <laughs> not. This was... I okay, so this is this is the one fight that made me happy that I cheesed the Reaper because if I had stayed at whatever <laughs> level I was at before, which would have probably been like sixty something at the time, I think I would have wanted to commit die. Like this would have been <laughs> so profoundly hard. Uh, it was insane. Like yeah. what level were you when you finished this fight? Did I'm pretty you... sure I was like level ninety two or something because I like but that was my that was my last last play like the, the last play for when before I'm playing this one. It. When I first did it, I believe I was like level fifty something. So I was kind of low and yeah, I was like is this fight Maybe ever going to... fight scales I then? I fought this know, thing like... for like a, an hour, Homesy. An I was hour? Like, yeah, easy. An hour, like fighting this thing. It was that like, hard. As in an hour as in that single attempt or an hour fighting, dying, fighting, dying? The first... Okay, so the first playthrough, I died once. You died once, came back and then fought it again for an hour and... It won. was about half an hour each. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was that. It, it was hard. <laughs> God damn, dude. Yeah. That's, yeah, it was very tedious very overwhelming and like yeah. constantly having so the the fight obviously for people who are watching or listening as well the fight mm-hmm. is like this enormous almighty like digimon looking god kind of like huge thing yeah like these massive wings um this kind of like steel looking body like this just is pretty much just this giant god looking creature yeah um and like down next to it like on each of its sides it has like these well they don't look like sheaths but they're no. sheaths with different like items or weapons yes. in it. and each different arm that it has that it generates yeah. pulls out like a different weapon that bestows a different sin upon like your yeah. um on your characters and it's stuff, the like, seven deadly playing. sins coming back again yeah and like it just keeps like giving you all this shit as you're going through the fight i was exceptionally lucky though in the every single one that it cast on me mm. i mean it, i know that they were only meant to stick for one turn because every time it cast one it went for a cycle and then it disappeared yeah but None of them affected me. I was oh, so great. lucky. Apart from obviously the ones that I think one of them made you use double the SP or double the HP for moves for yeah. one of the one of the yeah. things. But all the other ones, very little of them actually caused like a like rage, I think was fine because it just did damage anyway. There was another one for fear, I think, where I wasn't able to maybe not able to attack, but I still attacked. So yes. all these different debuffs, I just kind of went through them anyway. I don't know. It's, it's, RNG just was looking over me because I was fine. <laughs> um, so the guy that you fight, his name is Yaldaboth. Yaldaboth, yeah, that's yeah. Him, Yaldaboth yeah. Um, was the god. Um, oh, I'm gonna look it up, but basically, um, this what it is. Oh, it's the it's the demiurge. Hold on a second. There, there was a name for it as well. Demiurge as well hmm. is what the main name of Yaldaboth is. Um, but there is a, there's a meaning behind it. Basically, in the Platonic, um, in a in a neo-Platonic schools of philosophy, the demiurge is an artisan-like figure responsible for fashioning and ma- maintaining the physique. Uh, the sorry, the physical universe. Um, the the uh, Gnostics adopted the term demiurge, although a fashioner, the demiurge is not necessarily the same as the creative figure. Uh, creative figure in the uh, in the mono- monothic sense, because of the demiurge itself, the material from which the demiurge fashions the universe and are both considered to be consequences of something else. The you know basically what's happened around you. Yeah, man, there is like honestly, there is so much to it as well. That like I'm reading, I'm scrolling down Wikipedia here, and it's like all these Bible references and holy shit. But basically, <laughs> that that was uh, what Yelda both was. It was um, the name of the demiurge or false god. Created when Sophia so, uh, Sophia tried to emanate with her counterpart Christ. Wow! <laughs> I'm not behind the origin of that character, holy shit! I, I didn't look into any of that. I just yeah, saw the I guy was like, "You're phone. fake Igor. You have to die." <laughs> yeah, fake gods. Um, but yeah. Uh, so battling this, it took me an hour. How long did it take you? Uh, probably like, oh, you, you had an hour, like yeah. a half My first hour each one. attempt, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Like the, 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 fi- the first attempt that I did because I didn't know what was going on. Like it probably took me about like a half an hour or so Wow, yeah. to do. So like, I, I like the whole thing though, like, cause there's, there's certain points where I think it's health kind of locks anyway, like where it yeah. has to go through certain phases. So it's sort yeah. of like a, it's like a phase locked fight. Yeah. Um, but yeah, after, a, after doing a certain amount of damage, like a new arm comes out it's like, what's happening? It's pulling out a new thing. Be <laughs> careful. And I was just like, what the fuck is going to, what's this hand doing? Yeah. And then and the each bell. different arm takes like, some the of them gun. don't take physical damage. Some of them yeah. don't take gun damage. Some of them don't take <laughs> nuclear. Like, it was great. It's like, 
fuck man yeah um i ended up because i was using i think i had obviously myself yusuke i think morgana and um makoto you know who helped me heaps in this one well first of all mara the the big uh <laughs> thomas the dick engine basically helped me a lot with uh, the um the one shot kill a lot Wait, of that. did you get can you get that persona the big dick yeah what of course i did oh my god that's disgusting the one shot kill oh of- i had yeah. one shot kill but i've got it on seth the big black dragon okay there you go I, I i fused um i got all the right personas and got seth and he looks so sick so two of my characters actually got one shot kill after i had it on uh i think it was yusuke and um myself hmm. um also haru's um oh, Mel- God, melody yeah uh yeah i think he's a melody but um she had the um psychic pull away like that 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 oh, power debuff psychic yeah they deep up yeah holy shit was that helpful as well so right. i used on my latest playthrough i was able to use um the one shot twice on him and basically use the debuff on him a few times and i was like oh my god this is heaven. Like I can get yeah. rid of him almost immediately. And it only took me about 15 minutes to defeat him in, in my last playthrough. So it was great. Sick. I didn't think about the debuffs. Cause yeah, her debuff with, um, Sayo attacks is, <clears> um, <throat> or her, the, her, her debuff for yep. psychic damage is on everyone. It's not yeah, just it is, a yeah. character too. I forgot about that. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. Um, so getting past this as well. Oh, let's talk about the final phase of this fight. Basically you think you're down. <laughs> yeah. You think you're out. And then uh, Mishima comes along. Yeah. Fucking hypes everybody up being like, it's the Phantom Thieves, you nerds. <laughs> Cheer for them. Encourage them. They're the ones that have been fighting for you this whole time. And then everyone's like, you know what? This kid's right. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I've got Make a good Phantom point. Did you remember Fuck the Phantom yeah, Phantom Thieves? Thieves. And everyone busts enough <laughs> the Phantom Thieves. And then we hear it. And then we shoot the cunt in the head. Like, that's how? so sick. It's how, so, though? so good. Like, how did you I, shoot him, though? Hey? How did you shoot him? Um, oh, Fucking it's like arse a, end. Hey, yeah, you get like the freaking immense, like massive, like Arsene comes back and then evolves into like the a trickster, like yeah. a trickster god, basically. Is yeah. like you t- I don't. What was the name of the god that we get? It, I can't remember. Wasn't it just Arsene? No, nah, he's got a different name. Oh, does he? I don't know. I can't sure. remember his name, but like, yeah, this massive fuck off big guy comes out, pulls From out the a single gun. Like you, you've only got one option in that fight too, and it's just like the, your your enormous persona pops up. You get like a you get one option to use a persona ability, and it's this like yeah. Um, I can't remember what the bullet name was, but you shoot this bullet through his head. Oh, yeah, it. but you have to do that. Like, you actually have to go into your persona. You, you know, like, you push out persona, and it basically, like, here it is, bang, one shot, kill. It's just an almighty ability bullet. Just, just a like gun that just shoots him, him right in the head. Good now, God. it does say something here as well. Like, this false god comes out from the depths of the floors and everything, but your god comes from the heavens and mm-hmm. comes down to help you. Yeah. As well. That's grouse. Like, that's great metaphoric use. Yeah. Um... And as well to finish off that and to actually get um, the, tro- the the treasure of the Holy Grail is the Holy Grail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, once again, metaphoric, but it's there. Um, but you don't get to take it. Morgana t- takes this one as well. Mm-hmm. But as you were taking it, he also says goodbye as well. Like, this is yeah. it, guys. We're done here. We're, our work is done. This is goodbye. Um, and then you guys all end up back on the floor in uh, Shibuya and you're all standing there. And it was the real anime moment here. The whole freaking everything glows and the floating cat. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was it was actually from the anime too. Like it's the it cuts to a scene from the anime. Right? Yeah, it goes like yeah, it goes to the animated. Because uh, I guess thing. that's why it's the true ending because you see the ending that's yeah. in the show. Yeah. Um, yeah. What were your thoughts yeah. on this? Well, I, mean, I thought it was actually happening. Like, obviously, yeah. we'll, we'll go into that in a moment. But like, Morgana starts like gives gives his massive speech and all that kind of stuff, and like. Yeah. Even though we romanced Arn in spite of Morgana, <laughs> even though he was a little shit that ran yeah. away for a bit and then came back and all the debacles and trouble and confusion that this cat has caused, even yeah. though he's helped a ton, it's sad to see him go. Like yeah. the whole thing happened. I was just like, man, Emotion, yeah, you know what? Emotional now. As much as I hate him, I like him too. It's like yeah. sad boys. He disappears. Yeah. And then the game keeps going. Yes, and the game longer. keeps going a little bit longer. Now, um, it goes for about a couple hours after this as well, mm. which is like when I message him, I'm like, oh, yeah, the game goes for another two hours. I wonder what he's going to think now. <laughs> so yep. the story is you've defeated it. You've defeated this um, false god thinking that everybody's going to praise you. Mm-hmm. None of that happens. You end up back in Shibuya. Everything goes back to normal. Your clothes go back to normal. Everybody's standing around and it's like, 
and everybody's still worried about what their boyfriend's going to think of what they're going to wear tonight and all this other shit. And it's like, yeah, well, I just saved the fucking world. <laughs> and no one knows. No one no cares. One knows, yeah. yeah. I was also um, frustrated to see after this happened because Morgana disappears for obviously we see that happen. Yeah. Um, then Igor and Lavenza disappear too. Like we, yeah. we finally get to see true Igor and Lavenza, like the twins finally fused together for like a few hours in the game. And then they're fucking gone. It's like, they're yep. the coolest. Yes. They are so cool. And then they just evaporate <laughs> in front of you. It's like, are you fucking fuck. Well, you can play Persona 4 Golden and see them as well if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to wait for Persona 5 um, Royal to come out. Anyway, I wonder if they're going to come back in that. So Yeah, exactly. So, um, speaking of that, uh, also I wanted to say that um, having to play all throughout the main part and then come to this end part, basically, um, Sai Nijima comes up to you and says, hey, um, you did well. But now you have to go and admit that you're a phantom thief, first of all. And second of all, you're probably going to get thrown into Druvy. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, you serious right now? Good job. Jail. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you serious? You can't defend me here? What the hell? And you still end up in jail for like two months. <laughs> yeah. Which is like, what the fuck? By the way, I want to make a mention here. Do you know what date this was as well? All this happened? No, I can't remember. Christmas Day. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So it's the twenty. No, it's the twenty. Twenty fourth. No. Twenty fourth. Because it's the twenty fourth, and then we get to see if you romance a character, you get to spend Christmas Day with them. Okay. Did you not? Did you not have that the first playthrough? I romanced Ann, so Christmas Eve, Sai is talking to you, and everyone's. This like, is Christmas Eve. I, thought, I could have sworn it was Christmas Day, wasn't it? It's the twenty fourth. Because then oh, the next okay. day you the next day you spend with uh or well, the next day I spent with Ann. Oh, and then okay, I no, you're right. No, no, no. You, you, you're completely correct. Yeah. I must. It must have slipped my. So it is Christmas Eve. Yeah. So it's Christmas Eve. You save the world for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Save the world in time for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle. I did like that. My characters were in their Christmas clothes as well. I had some of them in like oh, wow. Morgana in the Christmas outfit. So it was just a little fucking cat snowman <laughs> like buzzing around. It was really Great. cool. Um. So yeah, you get uh, basically you get thrown into jail. Mm-hmm. Um. You get thrown into juvie for a couple of months. Um. Basically, the, the game kind of does a few time leaps here. It was the first time the game kind of took the calendar and just went... And just I, yeah, I noticed that. I was like, fuck, it's skipped from like December to February and then February yep. to... Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you get picked up by Sojiro. Yeah. Daddy comes to pick you up from jail. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, sup? Sup, dad? I like that. That was cool. Yeah. So he comes uh, comes to go pick you up and he's like, hey, you got you got your friends waiting for you over at the, the cafe and they're all there. You all have a big party. Yay, Joker's back. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing much happens from this point other than like, oh, until we hit Valentine's Day. Where you, uh, did you, so this is where I'm kind of going to, what, what's up? Doesn't Morgana come back in that bit too? Oh yeah, Morgana really comes back. I was yes. going to say, there's something pretty yes. big that happens there. Yeah, Morgana, Morgana fucking does come turns back. up yes. being like, oh, you're back. I've been just walking around alive the whole time. Just yeah. I didn't want to come back after saying my dramatic goodbye. It's like, you fucking serious cat. Yeah. Now I hate you again. I'm happy yeah. you're back, but you could have just turned up again and made everyone happy. I forgot about that. Yeah, Morgana does come back and everybody's like, what happened? And it's like, oh, I didn't want to come back because it was I made a speech and if I came back, it would have been weird. My notes for that literally just says in all caps, Morgana came back, what the fuck? <laughs> um, it was great. And they all had their party. Whee! And yeah. then now we and now we get to the to uh, this. I want to, uh, but before we get into Valentine's Day and everything, mm. want to jump into um, our usuals. So uh, give me your um, final confidant rankings. Do you remember any of them? I don't remember all of them. I know mm. I got Kyle Kami because like a lot of time we had to kill. I think like after a certain point because yeah. we we got the calling card stuff ready for <clears throat> Shido pretty yeah. not early but like had some time. Yeah. Um. So I got Kawakami and Tak Takemi up. Yep. To seven and six. Arn was obviously ten. Yeah. Um. Sajiro was ten, as well. Sajiro called us. Um. Oh, Sajiro calls Fu- uh, Futaba calls Sajiro dad as well at one point. Yeah. And he's like, "Can you say that again?" And she's just like, "Yeah, we we can say it again." It's really. And then he calls me a man in his family as well. Like the character, like he calls you a man in his fam- man in the family, and it's like. Fuck man, this guy's real yeah. cool. You obviously like you've made like a pretty big impression. Yeah. Um. Also, because we're not going into the Valentine's Day bit yet. As you as you leave to go to um, what's well, a leave leave entirely? Um, you he like you give him um, you have an option to give him your journal of staying there. Right. Um, and then he takes it from you, and he you know he's just like he, you know does not yeah. that important now, but you know thanks. And when you leave leave yes truly leave he like you he you walk out and he's just like you're like 
thanks for everything and he just goes yeah yeah and then you walk <laughs> out and then he just turns around and looks at the book and he's like oh i was oh. like fuck so you're on, no. i'm sad <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah. that was um yeah, that was probably like one of the saddest parts of the game. Like, oh, I say sad, it's happy sad, but like seeing yeah. Sejiro's emotions finally like come through yeah. out like a bit more. Obviously, apart from you know his whole yeah. um arc there, um like getting through his confidant rankings, but he was ranked ten. Sorry, bit of oh, a tangent awesome. there. So you maxed him, yeah. I maxed him. I I got um who was the girl at the church again? I can't remember her name. The one that plays that game. Oh yeah, uh, I can't blah, 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 recall her name. Shogi, now. the Shogi Master. Shogi Master, uh, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I ranked her up to like. She was four one of my favorite characters too. Yeah, yeah. So you actually went to the church. You finally went I, to the church. I did eventually because I had some time. Like I didn't know what to do after I. Hifumi, Hifumi, Hifumi. Yeah, Hifumi Togo. yeah, yeah. So yeah. we we leveled her up to. Um, I don't recall all the rankings. So it was I know like we four had or five, like but max. you finally got there near the end of the game. So to to actually get there, like four or five props, man. We did. We did pretty well. Like most of my, I think all, if not. There's the speech giving man. I don't think I touched on at all. Yeah, that's um, okay. I, I'm doing him now. I've maxed him already. But yeah, you know. and on the kid, the arcade kid. Um, I have not. Like honestly, I just found out about this kid, and I still haven't ranked him. No way. Yeah, no, yeah. I, found, I found him because he was for. Um, I think it was tower or pillar. There's some type of some arc of persona that he is part of because uh, <laughs> I wanted to rank up Seth faster, and Seth yeah. is like tower or something like that. Yeah. And he's the one that's part of it. So I wanted to rank up Seth. So I found him and he teaches you about like um, how to play the shooting game and like All you, right. you fight the cheater and mementos and stuff. So it's <sighs> really, really, really cool. Too. I got him yeah. done too. Or oh, not all of it, but he was also like, like rank four, five, six, somewhere nice. in the middle there. Nice. Um, Mishima was 10. Mishima was max Very rank. cool. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Futaba was eight, I think, oh, by wow. the end. I didn't get to the point where I could romance her yet. That's all right. Um, oh, and Makoto. Uh, oh, and Haru. Yeah, Makoto and Haru. Makoto, I was stuck because I couldn't... Um, I wasn't a high enough charm ranking. All right. Charm is still level four and my... What was the other one? Kindness? There's, nah, Kindness was max because I mm. was able to do Sejiro um, mm. or his thing. Guts, Guts, I think. Yeah. Maybe. Guts was the other one. Everything else was like maximum wow. um except for charm, charm and guts. guts fair enough yeah oh there you go so, that was going to be one of my questions what's your final social stats but there you go yeah um we did so, well. and your final romance was one and only on only on yeah i cool. didn't get um because i didn't get my charm up high enough i couldn't romance makoto because that's all i needed if i'd have done that i could have done could have got makoto if i spent more time with futaba i could have done that too okay so now that you've done that i'm going to spoil something for you <clears throat> So you could have romanced quite a few girls throughout this game, including the Doctor. Yeah. Um, and Valentine's Day, when it rocked around, if you did not answer the text messages or only went on a date with one of them, mm. the next day, they all end up at the bar, at the cafe, and kick your ass. Oh, seriously? <laughs> I'm serious, yeah. I'll actually send you the video later. But they basically all come in and they're all like, hey, I saw you win here last night with somebody and then they all come in and it's, oh no no the scenario starts off with Sojiro running into the bar and going what have you done and he's like <laughs> like literally word for word what have you done and he's like what are you, and you're like what are you talking about and he's like they're all outside they're all angry at you and they all just come in and you are fucked they're all standing in front of you and you're just standing like oh shit <laughs> so if you, if you multi-romance in the game yeah. and don't if you, what happens if you spend time with them can you spend time with all of them on Valentine's Day? No. So no matter what, if you romance more than one character, you get You're beaten up at the end. <laughs> You're yeah. fucked, yeah. So yeah, I did cool. that. Um, I accidentally did that. And I think you saw the tweet and you said, oh, too late. I saw that. But um, Oh, because you tweeted like, you tweeted a picture about like um, having like nine romances. Yeah, like and I made a, and I but it was a like, mistake. Oh. It was a mistake. I kept no, pressing dude. the X button. I kept mashing the X oh, button. Oh, you? Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I sent it to... Erica I mean, I Harlaka. wanted to do it in the yeah. game for a meme anyway. <laughs> Erica Harlacher, who's actually the voiceover for Arn. Um, Erica Lindbeck, who's the voice for Futaba. Yeah. Um, and uh, the voiceover artist for um, Makoto as well. And Mog as well. That, mm. Like, I, t I tagged the voice artist and then Mog came into the conversation. They were like, <laughs> you scum, you this. I'm like, ladies, I swear. I just pressed just X. Just playing it the game. It my <laughs> fault. <laughs> I was just trying to get through this fast. Not, Dan's fault is so charming. Oh man, it was great. Um, and then have the voiceover uh, artists actually have a go at me too. That was just like, oh god, <laughs> it was great. Um, but um, yeah, so uh, it was that's cool. Uh, you had one final romance, which is Aunt. Um, awesome. Yeah. Now, favorite character. 
Uh, it's got to be Sajiro. It has to be Sajiro, yeah. yeah. Sajiro, yeah. Or Sajiro, yeah. yeah. Um, just seeing like how his care for you develops throughout the game and how you how he starts to respect you and he, um, like he's the one person that like realizes and starts to have a benefit of the doubt about the whole like you know who you truly are kind of thing. Yeah. And like was he even sent there for you know assaulting someone which you never did. Yeah. Um, and in the start like for maybe like the first third of the game he's like oh you know just be good and then eventually he's just kind of like this kid really isn't actually that bad this kid's really not that bad man this kid's cool this is my son <laughs> yeah exactly just, yeah, you, it, build that, like, you build up that relationship to that point yeah it's um, i liked Arn's character too just because of like her constant resolve with like trying to further herself and work harder and um i can't remember her friend's name her close friend's name shio was it yeah shio yeah yeah Shizu, Shio. yeah um Suzuki, yeah like her like constantly looking out for her like she's just got a really really selfless character too yeah um and i think they're probably yeah apart from your own character too like obviously because you you know you have such a big influence yeah, on those exactly, people but yeah. i think sajiro is like top dog oh yeah i agree yeah definitely ryuji was a competitor for a little while until he turned out to be a bit of a cunt so. <laughs> yeah Sorry. i remember that yeah um Holmesy. Um, so we so we get to that point uh, where he does where you do meet up with everybody and you say your goodbyes you leave the bar and you, and uh, so you leave the cafe and um, Morgan is actually coming with you, um, mm. but you end up in town everybody's getting ready to leave, jump into the van and uh, it found, you found out that um, Morgana steals the spark, a spark plug from the other from the uh, FBI's car. Oh, the car that's gonna follow you. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I love that. I just had moment. to borrow a plug. And he's yeah. like, why would the car start? <laughs> It's great. And they head off into the sunset. And that is where roll game. credits. Mm-hmm. Holmesy, give me your give me your final thoughts on everything that you have played. And uh give me also your personal score out of ten of this game. You're asking something of me that I don't normally do. I know. I think I know. you know that I don't review things. And we do that we rating. usually do this on Dash Culture. For uh-huh. stuff like when we play games or review movies or anything like that, we give a score out of 10. So I kind of carry that over to here. So give me your final thoughts uh-huh. on Persona 5 in total. And um, even like some extra notes that you've written or anything that we haven't covered yet. And oh, we've... Oh, actually, no. We've... I... There was one note. That there was one note? Yeah. Cool. Um, and, yeah, go on. And give me your score out of 10. It's definitely a game that I'm glad I played through. Um, yeah. I know, obviously, if you've watched, if you listen to the podcast or watch the stream the whole way through, you'll know that I had my reservations about it at the start. Yeah. But um, I'm really glad I saw the whole game through. Yeah. This is definitely a commitment level game. Like if you're yeah. going to play it, you need to be like, you need to really like sit down and like convince yourself you're going to finish this game. Um, it was really, really well done though. Um, I yeah. can't recall who, who are the developers for this game now. That's the one thing I always uh, forget. Atlas. Atlas, that's right. Yeah. So they've done like a phenomenal job putting this game together. There's no... I think given the scope of the game, like how big it is, I can't see any plot holes in the game too, which I think is also the thing that kind of dumped out of me that there's so many different ways this game can be played and done and the order of events and everything that has a true cause and effect in game makes sense and is linked together. Everything, absolutely everything. Um, Yeah, it's a, I think one thing as well that I liked about the game was the attention to detail. There was little things as well, like, um, lavenza being with you like the entire time and stuff like lavenza's voice was the one that was constantly talking to you whenever you got a new confidant she was that voice that was talking to you yeah the whole that's time. right yeah like, i've been with you the whole time like lavenza's voice has been the one that's been telling you with the birth yeah. of something persona etc yep. um during one of the interrogations with sai as well this is the other note that i had like even when she said she's been with you the whole time you recognize her voice but then even there's like a there's a scene where you're being interrogated by sai and a butterfly goes past you yeah which is lavenza that's correct. Um, yeah. There's just so many little things, little attentions to detail throughout the whole game that make it just like a a really polished love child of Atlas, and like the fact they've put so much time and effort into making a closed ended a closed ended game. Like That's great. all 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 seals plugged, no holes in the story. Really, really well done. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a nine. Wow. I don't I don't like giving numerical ratings. If anybody's watched any of my reviews on anything on my youtube channel you know i hate giving numerical yeah scores but because it's dash game and because we're here i'm gonna do it so i'm gonna give it a nine my only gripe is the start of the game slow which i'm sure you're you're sick of hearing by now but the start <laughs> of the game was a bugbear and yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. that's the that's the only point i'm gonna make it lose out on is the uh the longevity of some parts but apart from that 
nine fucking out of ten. awesome game do recommend it was yeah. uh, an exceptionally good time and a really really good story and gives you a lot of attachment to so many characters in the game and makes you care about what you're doing and the choices you're making fantastic i love hearing that i'm, gl- I'm glad that you had uh, an enjoyable experience out of this game it was one that as i said uh, that i was worried about when we first started but i'm glad that you came through especially that first palace and got through it and we're at a you made it right through we we've done a project together we've actually con- finally we finished are, something we're concluding a project together this is something After that eight years <laughs> yeah I know, right? we've actually done something together for once my god it's been great hey um Holmesy, um this is it. This mm. is the end. We have reached the end. Not for the pod, but just for this series. For, of the for pod. this series, for se- for series one, for season one, Don't guys. <laughs> if you didn't know, this has been Dash and Holmesy take your hearts. Make sure that you catch Holmesy on Twitter and on Twitch at Holmesy Five. Make sure you catch myself on Twitter at Dash Gamers. Um, make sure that you follow us on iTunes, Spotify. SoundCloud, other services, dashandhomesy.com, where you can give us that cheeky five-star rating to help us out. Um, But yes, once again, this has been the final episode in season one of Dash and Homesy. Man, uh, thank you so much for doing this with me, by the way. This has been (laughs) great. It's been a good time. It's been... I'm glad we finally got around to seeing something through. Dan's actually wearing a shirt right now for... uh... (laughs) It says Risen Chin and Holmes and Dashcast. And uh, a while back, we were going to do a pod. Um, uh, unfortunately, I was not able to commit to it due, due to my own time constraints. But there was myself, a friend of ours named Kieran, a mutual friend of ours. Yeah, Chin. And, and <laughs> chin, yeah. The Chin. Riz, Kieran, and I were going to do a Dashcast about like yeah. weekly gaming news. But um, unfortunately, yeah. due to everyone's uh, external personal commitments, we couldn't get around to keeping that on board the whole time. But no. um, it's nice to finally have done see this, something yeah. through from start to finish and have it be yeah. complete so it's been a good time yeah man um i can't i can't stress it enough thank you so much for doing it uh, also thank you to everybody who has listened in this season um like um there are so many of you who have listened this season we thank you so much uh, for that and um we hope that you come around for our next season as well uh for our some of our specials that we have in between um that we've got a few and um there's going to be so much stuff that we're going to be doing throughout the year myself yeah yeah exactly Holmesy's is really excited we're going to be do- our next episode i will say we will be doing our open your heart special finally that we were supposed to do back in january but that never really came through just due to time <laughs> but we will get there we're going to get there next episode is in three weeks so stick around we're still going to be here uh dash and Holmesy, open your hearts is our next episode in three weeks thank god um Rockamami came in. Oh, Dan came in at the end. It's okay, Rockamami. Thank you so much for even popping in. Much appreciated. Um, you can definitely watch and listen afterwards too. <laughs> um, but guys, thank you so much for this season and uh, we'll see you next season. But until then, much love. Stay hungry. Gamer.com. Hey, Holmesy. Yeah, man. Thanks for doing this with me, man. It's been good. It's, I been, really, it's been a lot of fun. I really appreciate it, dude. I really do. Um, But I do have something to tell you. Yeah. It's not over. Wait, what? <laughs>